we have pigmentation 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 issues dark circles scars uneven skin tone a little bit of redness in certain areas there's so much going on which makes me feel like this video is going to be so long and it's going to take forever to edit but i'm doing it because i love you guys Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, which is all about makeup and everything beauty. Now today I'm gonna to be showing you how to hide flaws. I know there are people out there who say you should embrace your flaws and there's nothing wrong with that. Embrace them, go for it. Sometimes I embrace them, but embracing them doesn't mean that I want to show everyone my flaws. Sometimes I just wanna cover it up and sometimes I'm having a really crap day and seeing my flaws in the mirror isn't gonna make me feel better. Sometimes I just wanna cover it up and that makes me feel better. That lets me get on with my day as normal and I feel better about it. And there is nothing wrong with that. Honestly, if you wanna cover them up, cover them up. Each to their own, do what makes you feel happy. So I'm gonna show you how to cover up flaws because that's what I like doing. Sometimes I embrace them, but most days I like to cover them up. So we're talking about pigmentation issues, dark circles, like veins, uh, redness, blemishes, active spots, all of that. So before we head into the video, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so that you never miss a video. You can also catch me on Instagram for daily beauty news and PR unboxing, which you'll find on my stories. Now let's head straight into the video. As usual, I have no makeup on. I only have my moisturizer and my eye cream on. And I wanted to start with the first product that helps me to kind of hide some of the flaws that I have. Now, like I mentioned, like everyone has different flaws or what they consider to be flaws. Some people embrace them. And to be honest, I have a couple of flaws that sometimes I embrace, but there are some flaws that I just wanna cover up and I just don't wanna be seeing them to be honest with you. So I'm gonna go through each of my flaws with you because it may be something that you kind of struggle with yourself as well. Now, the first thing is my enlarged pores. So I suffer from kind of obvious pores, like obvious open pores, like we all have pores, but some are just more obvious than others. I also struggle with slight acne scarring. So I used to suffer from a little bit of acne, mainly on my cheek area. And since then I've struggled with the scarring. I'd much rather deal with the scarring than the actual acne, but um, you know, it's still a bit of a struggle. So sometimes I have like slightly kind of, it's uneven skin, slightly bumpy because of the old acne scars if that makes sense. So it's like slightly pitted, if you see what I mean. It almost looks like an oversized, over an, an enlarged pore, but it's actually an acne scar, if that makes sense. So first thing I try and kind of deal with is that. So what I use is my primer, and I use two primers for this if I really wanna go all in with trying to like hide flaws that I have. But bear in mind, I'm showing you every step, everything in terms of skincare and makeup, but some most of the time I kind of take away whichever part that I like and incorporate that into my makeup. So some days I might not just have time to deal with primer and everything or trying to hide my enlarged pores or acne scarring. So I just go in with whatever I feel like doing, but I'm just showing you all of it in one go. So first thing I'm gonna use is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Soft Blurring Primer. And I'm just using a very small amount of this. And this generally helps to kind of like give you that blurring effect to the skin, but I don't feel like it's enough, if you see what I mean. So I've used that all over and as you can see, it's kind of like mattified my skin a little bit and it's given that like nice soft blur effect. But that's not enough for me because otherwise I'd be walking out like this and that's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna go in with my next primer, which is a little bit more targeted. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer, oil-free, which is amazing, and it's pore minimizing. Now this is more of that like pasty finish to it. So I like to use this just on areas that I feel that I need it. It's way too much for, for all over. So I'm gonna use this on this. These are the main areas that I use. And so I'm like kind of like almost patting and almost stroking, not really, yeah, I'm kind of like stroking. Yeah, that's it, I'm stroking. So I'm kind of like stroking that on. This cheek, this, okay, so this side of my face has way more kind of acne scarring than the other side. And actually you've probably seen it in some of my previous videos as well, which you will, will you see it? Yeah, you'll see it today as well. When I apply my foundation, before I apply my powders, in between that whole step, you really get to see my acne scarring 
like you'll see it it's like it's horrible i hate the look of it do you know what and i know everyone's talking about embrace your flaws it's so bad to kind of like talk about oh why you're trying to like hide flaws i'm sorry but if i want to hide them i want to hide them if you're embracing them good for you great but honestly i just want to i want to hide them if i if i had a choice i would not have them like let's be real like seriously I, I, no one is out there not many people are out there saying oh my god i'm so loving these open pores or this acne scarring you know no one's doing that so anyway that's just a whole other topic so i've applied it there and that's kind of like helped i'm going to put a little bit here and i'm just kind of like like i said stroking what i like to do some people just kind of smooth it on and that's it i like to actually go in every direction because i feel like then i'm getting you're always kind of like filling the area so it's like a slight filler so i kind of like go in every direction to make sure that i kind of really smooth over my skin i'm going on the nostrils here because i have open pores here and here and i'm going to do this on the other side as well okay so i think that's about it where i have these kind of open pores that's my skin done now i'm going to move on to my base the dark circles and the uneven skin tone and the vein that makes me look like i have an even worse dark circle than the other side like this vein here sometimes really pops out it depends like if i'm really angry or something it just starts it's really bad it just kind of overtakes everything we have pigmentanish pigmentanish pigmentation issues, dark circles, scars, uneven skin tone, a little bit of redness in certain areas. There's so much going on, which makes me feel like this video is gonna be so long and it's gonna take forever to edit, but I'm doing it because I love you guys and I wanna show you everything. So I'm gonna start with my eyes now, I think. First thing I start with is my eyes, mainly my lids. I would love to be able to just leave them like that. I see a lot of people putting on eyeshadow on top of bare lids. Can we just talk about that for a minute? How are people applying eyeshadow on bare lids with no concealer or foundation? If you are the similar skin tone to me, or even darker to be fair, you must deal with under eye circles or, or like the top bit. It's not just about the under eye circles, it's also this bit here. And I don't feel like a lot of people talk about that enough. Like if you have under eye circles, I get that. But what about this whole area here? Honestly, when I see people applying eyeshadow on top, I'm like, you are so lucky that you have even skin tone. People don't realize how lucky they, ooh. I nearly knocked over my water. People do not realize how lucky they are to have even skin tone on their eyelids. So I'm gonna go with covering that up. I'm not gonna use color correctors and everything because I feel like, honestly, I just wanna make things easy for you guys. I don't wanna bring in loads of products because it just gets really, it's just too much. I'm sure you guys want quick ways to kind of cover up these things. So we're gonna go straight in with our concealer and I'm gonna use, as always, my favorite Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. And I'm using the shade medium here and I've nearly kind of run out of this. So I'm having to like get a stick and dig right into my concealer at the moment. And I'm sure we all do that. It's not just me. You've got to get your money's worth. You've really got to get right in there. Like I just got a whole load of concealer out. Like, can you imagine some people just throw their concealer away because the wand isn't giving them enough concealer? Like seriously, dig deep and you'll get to way more. Right, I'm gonna go in with my beauty blender in a second, but I'm gonna basically just apply this just on my eyelid. Do you know what I'm gonna do this side first because I really want you to see the difference of how it looks to have even skin tone there and to have uneven dark skin on your eyelids. So I'm gonna go in with my beauty blender and I'm just gonna start buffing this in. Seriously, imagine, imagine if the lids were just one color, that would be amazing. I'm sure people like me fully understand the struggle I mean, that would be just great. I wouldn't even have to do anything to it. So that is nice and clean, no darkness there, and we're loving it. Now I'm gonna go in to the other side. Now that that's done, I'm gonna go in with my Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder in Banana Bread and my Powder Puff, and I'm just gonna like press that in. Now I'm pressing this on so that none of that coverage goes anywhere. You know, we're really just kind of almost like cementing all that coverage so i'm just going to get my real techniques brush and just dust away the powder now because we've pressed it in we're not moving around any of that concealer and that's going to keep our nice even eyelids 
even. So next up, we've got the rest of the face and we're dealing with dark circles, pigmentation, a bit of redness, as you can see here and here, uh, even around my kind of nose area, I get a lot of redness. I've got a scar here from an awful spot that just decided to go and then reappear. So that's like left where you wanted to let me know that, that I'm here. So we're gonna try and cover all this up and I wanna, I know usually I would go in with my contour, which would end up covering everything up. I don't wanna go in with my contour because I want to show you how you can do it without having to contour because I conceal and contour all at the same time. And it just makes covering everything up super, super easy. So that is one way. But this is also another way if you don't wanna deal with all the contouring and creating all those shapes. So we're gonna go in with the concealer. Now I use the Tarte Shape Tape as I've always told you guys, I love it. I use two different shades sometimes. Now I'm gonna use light medium first and I'm gonna apply this just here. Now the reason I use this shade as well as the other medium shade is because this actually helps to kind of brighten the area as well so it does kind of it does make a difference we're trying to hide flaws like for me this is a flaw i have really dark circles so i want to brighten it so that's how instead of using color corrector i use concealer so i just eliminate the need for color corrector and all that hassle of having to put the right amount on and make sure it's like covering that area and then going with concealer plus it minimizes the layers that you have. So I use a slightly lighter concealer. So I apply it here and that helps to brighten that area. And then I go in with my normal medium concealer and I basically just cover that bit there in the middle. And what this does, it almost kind of like, it, it gives me that coverage obviously, and it's just not overly white. So the other concealer that I use is pretty light. And if I apply that everywhere, I'm left with that kind of I don't like it to be too white on the under eyes. I like it to look a little bit more natural, but good coverage. So that's why I use two shades. One's gonna help brighten up those areas. The other one is just there for the coverage. So now I'm gonna go in and blend that in a second. I'm just gonna let it set a little bit. If you've seen my previous videos, then you know how amazing that trick is. Let your concealer set for a little while before you go in to start blending because it stays in that area and the sponge doesn't soak everything up. So let's move on to the next part, which is the blending, because I think it's probably ready to blend. And then I'll move on to how I conceal other areas when I don't necessarily want to contour. So I'm going to go in with my sponge and I'm going to keep my movement, like almost like I'm just patting, patting continuously next to each other. Like I'm just going, I'm not going here and then here. I'm keeping my movement fluid, you know, fluid. I'm trying to think, is that the right way? Yeah, I'm keeping my movement fluid. So I'm gonna start here and keeping the shape the same. I always feel like when you're doing the under eye concealer, you look really possessed, like you're like eating it up. <laughs> it looks awful. I see some people doing their concealer and they're like this. Who does their makeup like this? How do you not need to stretch your eye? How do you not need to like, it doesn't even make sense to me. If I didn't do this, I would not be showing you exactly how I put my makeup on. So now you can see that it is nice and covered. My floor, that under circle, under eye circle floor is kind of like gone. And I'm gonna go over and do the other eye. So next up, we've done this. We've covered the dark circles, they are covered. Um, now what we wanna do is kind of cover up other floors before we put on the foundation, which kind of like ties everything together. So I'm gonna go in with a, another concealer. I'm gonna use the Cover FX Power Play Concealer in G Medium 2. And this has like a slight kind of yellow undertone to it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply this to areas where I am slightly dark, like for example, this area here, definitely this area here. And all I'm gonna do is just buff this in. So I'm just gonna get my concealer brush. It's the Hourglass Concealer Brush and I'm just gonna like buff this in here. And you can use a sponge or a brush. But you'll see how this just helps to brighten those areas up without it being too white. Okay, that's done there. And I'm really sticking to the areas which are dark. I'm not focusing on shaping or contouring. See, there you go. Now I'm gonna go back to my Tarte Shape Tape Medium Concealer. And I'm using my concealer brush, the Kevin O'Quart Masseal 
concealer, concealer brush. And I'm just kind of like dabbing it into the concealer, which is on the back of my hand. Now I'm just gonna go over the areas where I know they're gonna come through quite easily if I only go straight in with my foundation. Like for example, dark scarring. I've got another scar here. I'm gonna do those bits that I know that the foundation isn't really gonna cover. So I've got this area here. Now what I'm doing, when you're covering up like patches like that, like blemishes and things like that, you wanna really kind of stick to covering just that area, but also blend it out a little bit because otherwise, I know some people kind of go in and they just cover it here, 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 wherever they're going. And then when you put your foundation on, you can still see, if anything, it makes it kind of obvious. You can see these little like spot, light spots coming through. So they're not dark, but now they're white, if you see what I mean. So we're gonna just, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover it up like this. Now that's fully covered it up, right? But you can see it. Go there, keep going. I've got a bit of redness here. It doesn't matter if it's obvious at the moment because I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And where else do we have? A little bit here. I've got like pigmentation here. Another quick one actually because I've got a lot of redness on my nose. Now what I've done is I've applied it on the areas where I feel that they are flaws for me. They're dark areas there. They're either kind of like pigmentation issues or it's like a blemish from a spot which is quite dark and I know the foundation isn't going to cover or it's redness. Now what I've done is I've left it there, it's obvious, but do you remember when we did the under eye area I said to you that a little trick is to just let it semi dry a little bit and then you start buffing it in because it actually avoids the product spreading everywhere and it stays compact in that area. That's what we're doing here. But what we're going to do is we are going to use a sponge and I'm just trying to find my sponge. I'm using a beauty blender and what I'm doing is I'm literally just gonna buff it in. There's nothing on the sponge other than old foundation, so it's not enough to do anything. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of buff over it. When I say buff over it, I'm pressing. Very lightly, there. Now you can't see, like you can't see that obvious concealer line but at the same time, the coverage is still there. We're still, that product is still there hiding those flaws. Remember, let the concealer semi-dry before you start buffing it in because then you'll keep all of the product in that, in that little area that you want it to stay. If you start going in with your Beauty Blender, as soon as you've applied it, it's just gonna spread all over the place. The Beauty Blender is gonna suck up all that product and you're just gonna be left at square one again. I don't think that made sense. You're gonna be left at square one again you're gonna be back at square one again. Sometimes when you overthink these things, it sounds even more wrong. I swear this happens all the time to me in these videos. All these kind of sayings, I always get wrong, always. There's always like one word which is slightly different or, and it just completely changes the whole thing. Okay, so in with our foundation now. The foundation I'm using is EX1 Invisiwear and it's a very light finish but it's buildable so that's what i love about this foundation and that it has really nice olive undertone so it's perfect for my skin tone if you fall within that category so the reason i'm using a kind of normal foundation which is not full coverage is because i feel like it's what the majority of people use like a medium foundation a light medium foundation not necessarily everyone uses full cover foundation i personally prefer to just build it up with a light and natural foundation and deal like deal with all the concealing myself because then i feel like it doesn't look as cakey so i'm going to use this and i've got this in the back of my hand my shade is i alternate between number six and eight i know there's a bit of a jump there but i feel like seven is a bit kind of grayish for me so I like six and eight, but I'm using six today. It really depends on how tanned I am usually. I'm gonna go in with my beauty blender and my foundation. I'm literally just applying a little bit to my sponge and then buffing it into my hand first. Now, whatever coverage that we've done with our concealer, we don't wanna move it, right? So we're gonna go in with the sponge and dab it on. I'm not gonna move the sponge, like I'm not going back and forth. I'm not rubbing it against the skin. I'm not kind of sliding it over because I wanna keep it, keep everything intact. So that it's just kind of sitting on top and everything just, just kind of like melts into the skin. So we're gonna start with the forehead and just kind of, kind of buff this in. Go along the under eye area first, and the doorbell just rang. And they can wait. I'm not about to go to the door mid foundation application. 
Okay, so now that the foundation is on, I'm gonna go in with my powder. I'm going back in with my Huda Beauty Easy Bake, and I'm just gonna dip this into the powder, and I'm gonna go into the under eyes first. Now, I went there first, because obviously I want to avoid any creasing, and then I'm just spreading it out. And I'm just pressing this in everywhere, whatever's left over on the sponge, on the powder puff. And then I'm gonna go in with a stipple brush. I'm using the Makeup Forever 122 brush and there's nothing on this. And I'm literally just gonna very lightly dust this powder off. For the under eyes, I'm gonna get my Real Techniques brush and just dust it off. Now that we've done that, you can see that the flaws are kind of covered up. There's no dark circles, no pigmentation issues. There are no, there's no redness. There's, even my pores are covered. Even my pores are looking smooth. And I, I actually forgot, but you, I'm sure you saw it. You can maybe rewind and see in between my foundation and powder where those, where those open pores really look like big. So uh, maybe rewind a little bit so you can uh, go back and see that. But yeah, obviously it looks a bit scary right now because I have no eyebrows on, no eye makeup, no eyelashes, no bronzer, no blush, no highlight, no lipstick. So everything's looking a bit flat. This is kind of like the blank canvas and this is where we start adding dimension, start adding color, start enhancing those features and then everything looks much better. So let me add all that so you can see how it looks afterwards. So yeah, that is my finished look. So how did you find this video? I know that obviously there are different people like I mentioned, some people wanna embrace them, some people don't wanna embrace the flaws. I feel like you should just do what makes you feel happy and I really hope that this video has kind of helped you if you are like me, if sometimes you just do wanna cover it up. So I hope it's helped in some way. And if you have any questions, then please let me know in the comments below, I'll always reply. If you wanna get any of the products that I've used in this video, you can head over to my description box and it's all listed there, really easy. You just need to click on the links. Now, as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so that you never miss a video. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.